Welcome back to the 9mm Ammo Quest, where I'm looking for the best performing ammunition for a 3 inch barrel pocket pistol for self defense purposes. Double tap. Uh, I had a viewer send this to me. He's very interested in this because, first of all, it's, it's a plus P round, 9mm, 115 grain. It says that it is a Nosler jacketed hollow point, and the velocity is just kind of insane. It says 1395 feet per second out of a 4 inch barrel. That sounds potent. Let's find out what it'll do from a three inch barrel through ballistic gel. The double tap bullets in the bear gel penetrated pretty well. The shortest bullet came in at 11 and a quarter and the next shortest was 11 and a half. Those are both below our 12 inch minimum, but we have bigger problems <laughs> to worry about. Let's get on to the other three. Two of them came in at 12 inches and one, the furthest bullet at 12 and a half. So we penetrated okay. It did not quite meet the minimums across the board, but it's certainly close enough that we can run the denim test. What I'm concerned about is I am seeing a lot of well, shrapnel pieces falling off the bullets. Uh, not really increasing the bullet wound path, just making a smaller bullet at the end, so pieces just falling off. That, in general, is not a good sign. Here's an example of what I'm talking about as we dissect this portion of the block. I mean, here's a chunk of jacket that's totally separated. Um, in here, we're going to find the lead the lead core so this is the deepest penetrating portion of that bullet and then we've got other pieces that fell off so here's another chunk there's another piece of jacket and then as we reveal Here's a big piece of lead that just fell off. So you can see here that we have the jacket separated, the core is in front and behind. And this happened on all the bullets. They all really just kind of fell apart. Well, this is certainly a surprise. In the denim, the bullets stayed together a lot better. We don't see nearly as much of the fragmentation. Penetration was not any better though. That's Normally we see if the hollow point cavity gets plugged, the bullets will travel further through the denim than they would in the bear gel. But in this case, they're actually a little bit shorter. Shortest bullet came in at 10 and three quarters. Then we had two at 11 and a half, one at 11 and three quarters, and the furthest bullet just made it to 12 inches. So even though the bullets stayed together, we still have, uh, it's close, but it's disappointing. All right, here's the remains of the double tap bullets. Uh, each one of the bullets that impacted the bear gel just disintegrated into half a dozen to a dozen pieces. That is really not what you want. Bullets that, that shed weight end up making a smaller final bullet that penetrates less you need to retain your mass in order to have deep penetration and this didn't and it shows uh, now you'll see rifle bullets do this kind of thing uh, but they use uh, controlled fragmentation to to spin this shrapnel into the wound cavity we didn't really see that with the double taps here. All we got was it leaving pieces behind. So not really exaggerating the wounding, just just polluting the wound cavity pretty much. Now in the denim, uh, much better. These are big, fully expanded, scary bullets. So the denim performance, vastly better. I don't really know exactly how to tell you why this happened, other than to say that typically in uh, bare gelatin, we'll see bullets expand to a bigger, larger size than we will on when they go through the denim. And I'm thinking that that additional energy that's applied towards expansion just overwhelmed the bullets and, and tore them apart. Whereas in the denim, uh, they 
held together much better. We had a couple of pieces fall off, but that's really no worse than, than critical defense does. So denim performance was okay, but the penetration was less. We only had one that even reached 12 inches. So overall, uh, I would have a really hard time finding a way that I could recommend this route. Eh, fail. We got our answer and um, I didn't like it at all. Uh, the bullets were coming apart a little bit in the denim and through the bear gel they were just totally ripped apart. That's not good wounding. That's not what you want. Uh, the velocity was way off what was claimed which I guess is okay, but I can't imagine what the bullets would have looked like had they been traveling at, the, at that faster speed. They were already being ripped apart. Not a fan. Do not approve. This is not going to go on my recommended list. But I want to mention something else, and this has nothing to do with Double Tap, with Mike McNett, with any of that. It's just a circumstance that happened this test. You see all 14 of these bullets here? The reason they're out here is because every one of these had a light primer strike and failed to fire. That's not blaming double taps ammo. That's to point out that sometimes you get a combination of a pistol and a round that just don't like each other. Even if this had been absolutely superb performing ammo, I still couldn't use it in my own pistol because of these light primer strikes. This exact same ammo may work just fine in your pistol. If I gave you these 14 rounds, they might work totally fine. So it's the combination. It's just sometimes guns are, are persnickety. Sometimes they just don't like a particular brand, particular type, particular whatever. In my case, it was this. I'm not doing this to downgrade double tap. I'm just saying that this was an example of when this happened to me and so I thought I would point it out because I have the rounds here and I can show you what it did. So, uh, not my choice, uh, but I do have a lot more tests coming up for you. I mean, I have a lot of ammo tests here. Just picked up even some more ammo yesterday. So, please, if you like what you saw, hit subscribe, hit the like button, and uh, hopefully... Uh, if you subscribe, you'll be notified just as soon as new tests are posted.